Everlasting and loving Yahuwah in heaven, we give praises and honor unto you today. On this day of Sabbath, O oh Father, your children have gathered before you to worship and glorify you, O oh loving Abba. Please look down upon each and every one of us now. As we all gather in different places, we are united in love and spirit, O oh Father. Because you indeed have been trusted unto each and every one of us to worship you and honor you. 
Father in heaven, look down upon each and every one of us. Look down on the assembly of your son, O oh Father. As we learn once again your teachings and your commands, enlighten each and every one of us. Please allow us to feel thy Holy Spirit, that these, O oh God, may be used in rendering service and honor to your most holy name. We come to you today, O oh Father, with a heavy heart, because you know all the trials and difficulties we face while we are sojourning in this world. Father in heaven, please be with us. Guide us, O oh loving Abba. And if we are walking the wrong path, please redirect us, O oh Father. That would only lead us back to you, O oh loving Abba, so that we may continue to always fulfill this divine duty in serving and honoring your most holy name. Our King, our Lord, Yahushua, you are our shepherd. If we are lost, O oh Lord, please have mercy upon us. Hold us by our hands, O oh Lord. Carry us if you have to, O oh Lord. But don't allow us, O oh Lord, to be lost forever, so that we may continue to follow you, to remain in thy fold, to serve you, and give praises to our Father in heaven. Lord Yahushua, there is nothing more in this life that we want to be more like you. Lord Yahushua, you have shown the example for us to follow, but by ourselves, O oh Lord, we cannot do anything. We need your strength, O oh Lord Yahushua. We need you by our side to always be yoked with you, O oh Lord, so that we may indeed continue to serve and follow you, O oh Lord Yahushua, that will lead us to remain faithful servants of our loving Abba. Our beloved Father in heaven, as we sojourn in this life, please also help us always in our means of living. Lord Yahuwah, we need you to be with us, O oh Lord. You know the sacrifice, we know the hardships that we face in every day of our life. Help us, O oh Lord, to overcome whatever trials that may come along our way, so that we may continue and nothing will ever hinder us in rendering service and honor to your most holy name. Bless this offering that we have set aside for you, O Lord Yahuwah. Bless it, O Lord, that it may be well used by the assembly, O Father, all for your honor and your glory. For this we humbly beg, O loving Abba, only to thy Son, our Lord and Savior, Yahusha, Hamashiach. Amen. day to all of you, my beloved brethren, and a happy Sabbath day, wherever you may be attending with your families in our worship service today. As we continue to study and learn the Beatitudes of our Lord Yahusha, we are truly being enlightened on what right attitudes we must possess in order to receive the blessings from our loving Yahuwah Abba. For these are Yahusha's own teachings when it comes to those who are truly blessed by our Yahuwah, our Allahim. My brothers and sisters in the assembly of Yahusha, 
we must possess and embrace these beatitudes of our King so that we may prove that we are his true disciples and true children of Yahuwah Abba. This next beatitude of Yahusha, which you see on your screen right now, that we will learn today, will show us how we can truly prove and be fulfilled and be satisfied in a way that we can never imagine, my beloved brethren. My brothers and sisters in the faith in this life we live in, nothing lasts forever. But if we properly apply this attitude that we will learn today, it is a satisfaction of being filled that will last forever. So, what is another beatitude taught to us by our king so that we must develop, so that we may be truly be filled? Let us begin our studies today by reading the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and the verse is 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. What is another attitude that we must develop? Our King Yahusha says, blessed are those who what? Hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be fully satisfied and happy, for they shall be filled with the blessings of Yahuwah, our God. Like I mentioned in my introduction to you today, my beloved brethren, Nothing in this life lasts forever, including our life. Now, when we talk about hunger and thirst in this life, people normally refer to it as what? For example, when you go out to eat and are full, but are we really happy? Why? Why? Because that meaning of being full physically is temporary. After an hour, what? We're hungry again. We're thirsty again. So we are not truly being what? Satisfied. Ask yourself this, my beloved brethren. How many people do we know that are fully satisfied in their life? Why did I ask that? Because people in this life base their happiness on what? Materialism. People who have money usually wants, wants what? More money. People who have nice car want a nicer car, a house. They have a big, oh, they want a bigger house, so they're not truly satisfied until the what they get more. We are learning this beatitude of our Lord Yahusha because He's teaching us that our true satisfaction in life should come from whom, Yahuwah, our God. Why? Why? What has Yahuwah built in us, beloved brethren? Hunger and thirst for what? Righteousness. That is what Yahuwah have built in us as his children. Now, what kind of righteousness does Yahusha refer to that Yahuwah built into us? Here, let us read Matthew, the verses, chapter is 5, the verse is 20. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. What kind of righteousness did Yahusha refer to? It is the righteousness that surpasses that of the Pharisees. So here, my beloved brethren, our King Yahusha is telling us, unless our righteousness is that of his righteousness that we should hunger and thirst for, not surpasses that of the Pharisees or the teachers of the law, we will not, we will not, beloved brethren, enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Why did our king Yahusha mention this about the Pharisees? What kind of righteousness these Pharisees have? Here, let us continue by reading the book of Matthew. The verse is chapter 23, the verse is 28 to 28. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. What kind of righteousness did the Pharisees have that we must surpass or altogether never possess, my beloved brethren? 
One, based on what? Hypocrisy. What kind of hypocrisy? Our king made an example of like a whitewashed tombs. Outside what? They look beautiful, but on the inside, they are what? Full of dead man's bones and everything unclean. These were the Pharisees back then, so-called religious leaders and teachers of the law, back during the time of our king, Yahusha. They were all for show, beloved brethren. And I think we know this by now. People who wants to be recognized by their outside appearance rather than what? What's in the contents of their hearts. What about now during our time? Do we have also, we have these religious leaders who are beautiful on the outside, but on the inside full of hypocrisy? You know, brethren, I believe we already know that answer to that because we are the witnesses of it. We've seen it time and time again. What do we mean by that? We have religious leaders who preaches in their pulpit the importance of what? Example, brotherly love or respecting or honoring our parents. But yet they are the ones themselves who's breaking these commandments of Yahuwah Abba. Appearing to people as well, righteous, but on the inside, they are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Brethren, it is not about our appearance on the outside that's important to Yahusha, but it's about changing on the inside that's important. And that is the righteousness in the sight of Yahuwah God. What righteousness then should we thirst and hunger for? Here in the book of Philippians chapter 3, the verse is 7 to 9. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Yahusha, my Lord. For his sake, I have discovered every, discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. What righteousness should we thirst and hunger for? Not our own righteousness, but of whom? Yahusha, our King and Savior. Relationship with Yahusha, beloved brother, is the righteousness that we should all thirst and hunger for. This is what did the Apostle Paul, who's speaking these verses, realize about Yahusha. When he discovered Yahusha, he gave up everything to gain Christ. And we all know who Apostle Paul was, right, brethren? Who was Apostle Paul? Formerly known as what? Saul was from a very wealthy family, very well educated, Roman citizen at the time, which is the highest ever that you could possess, who became a member of Sanhedrin. And who were the Sanhedrin? People who were appointed elders who sit in a tribunal in every city in Israel. They made laws that governs the Jewish people. So Apostle Paul, he had what? Wealth and power. But what did Apostle Paul say about all these things he had? Garbage. Why? He found out what was really important in life to be truly satisfied. It is the righteousness that we should hunger and thirst for is Christ Yahusha, our King. Was Paul satisfied? Definitely yes, beloved brethren. What did Apostle Paul say? He says, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Yahusha, my Lord. Why? Why did the Apostle Paul mention this, my beloved brethren? What do people during our time hunger and thirst for in this life? Here, let us read in the book of John, chapter 6, the verse is 27. Do not work for food that spoils. Instead, work for the food that lasts for eternal life. This is the food which the Son of Man will give you. 
Because God the Father has put his mark of approval on him. What do people hunger and thirst for in this life normally? It is food that what? Spoils, my beloved brethren. And what does that represent? Material things in life. Now, brethren, we're not saying that these things are not important in our life. We need, this, we need these things, such as what? Food, clothing, shelter. We need these things to survive in this life. But never forget, these are just what? Temporary. And eventually, they will spoil or disappear. What food should we work for then? One that will last forever. Food that lasts for eternal life. The words of Yahuwah Abba are the food that lasts forever and which we should always thirst and hunger for, beloved brethren. That is why, beloved brethren, those of us has not yet signed up for the, our discipleship training program that we have launched in the assembly, we highly encourage you to do so. If we want to be truly filled and satisfied in life, then learn with us the words of our loving Abba, Yahuwah our Elohim. Let us not be content anymore in just listening from the sideline, my beloved brethren. In sports analogy, we need to step up our game. Because we, I, I, we all know, beloved brethren, where we all came from. I don't know, but before, all we, did, all we used to do was what? Listen. And did as we were told. But beloved brethren, we are now blessed. Blessed to know more the true words of our loving Abba. So with that responsibility, my beloved brethren, we need to step up our game. Prove to Yahushua our King, our the Lord, that we are his true disciples. And by doing so, we will truly be filled and satisfied with the words of Yahuwah. So my brothers and sisters in the assembly, if we have the attitude and of hunger and thirst for righteousness, we should always be vigilant and eager to know the holy words and commandments of our Elohim taught to us by our King Yahusha. For these are the food that will last for eternal life. Our lesson will now be continued by our brother. Blessed Sabbath day to everyone. Praises be to our loving Father that we are able to continue to study all about the Beatitudes. Our King said that blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they will be filled. They will be satisfied completely in this life. However, when we look at the lives of people today, even those who are affluent materially, even those who are wealthy, even those who are famous and filled with human wisdom, their life is not with satisfaction. They are looking for something else or looking for more things because they're not fulfilled in their life. They haven't been filled by the presence of our King Yahusha. The reason why is because people work for food that spoils instead of food that lasts for eternal life. So until we are able to learn to work for food that lasts for eternal life, we cannot be fully satisfied even here on earth. So what does that mean? What is the food that will last to eternal life? Let's continue our studies in the book of John, chapter 6, 32 to 35. Yahushua said, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Yahushua replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. What is the food that will never spoil? The food that will fully satisfy? The food that will last to eternal life? It is Yahushua himself. Yahushua says, I am the bread of life. So it's not what, but who. When our king says, blessed are those 
who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they will be filled. Yahusha was referring to himself. He is the righteousness of Abba. He is the bread of life. When our King Yahusha was speaking to the people, when he was preaching his sermon, they knew about what Yahuwah did in the past. Remember when they were going through the wilderness, how Yahuwah provided for their needs? What did they give the people of Israel? They gave them manna. Yahusha said, you ate every day the bread from heaven. However, what eventually happened to the people of Israel? They all perished. They all died, right? And so Yahusha says, there's better bread. Bread that does not spoil. Bread that will last to everlasting life. Yahusha says, I am that bread of life. What our king, Yahusha, wants to teach the people then and what he wants to teach us today. What is most important is to have that relationship with our king, Yahusha, that we should work hard, not for things, but for him, for, he, for a relationship with him. But why do people work so hard for food that spoils instead of pursuing a relationship with our King Yahushua. Let's read the book of John 26 to 27 and 35. Let's look at the context of verse 35 that we just read. Yahushua answered, I am telling you the truth. You are looking for me because you ate the bread and had all you wanted, not because you understood my miracles. Do not work for food that spoils, instead work for the food that lasts for eternal life. This is the food which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has put his mark of approval on him. Yahushua replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. What we read to you was about our King Yahushua performing a miracle. Do you still remember the miracle that our King Yahushua performed? Because throughout his ministry, he not only spoke the word of Abba, he also demonstrated the power of Abba through many miracles that he performed. In this instance, it was the miracle of feeding thousands of people. And so when the people were fed, what was the response of the people? They were looking for our king, Yahushua. But what was their motivation? What moved them to look for our king, Yahushua? Not because of Yahushua not to have a relationship with him. What was their purpose? What was their agenda? They wanted to eat food. They were looking for material food. There's nothing wrong with that, but they missed the whole point. And that's the point of this passage. They missed the point. What is the point? Our King Yahushua performed those miracles for a purpose. What is that purpose? That they will see what is more important than bread is the bread. Do you know who the bread is? Our king, Yahushua. You see, the people were unable to see that the giver of the bread is more important than the bread itself. What they failed to see is that Yahushua is the most important aspect. He is the food that will last forever. He is the righteousness that will fill us to satisfaction. But so many people today, just like back then, they live by faith and not by. They live by sight and not by faith. We need to be the other way around, right? We need to live by faith, not by sight. Those who live by faith, what is their priority? Yahusha, the Christ. And those who go to Yahusha, what happens to them? The Bible says they will never be thirsty again. They will never be hungry again. Because they will be filled. And this is what our King Yahushua wants to do. He wants to fill us with abundance. Fill us with himself. So that we, through the presence of our King Yahushua, we can accomplish many things for the sake of his kingdom. Well, how can we truly hunger and thirst for Yahushua, the living bread, the true righteousness of Elohim? Let's read the book of John 6, 56 to 58. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. 
I live because of the living, I live because of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die, as your ancestors did, even though they ate the manna, but will live forever. According to scriptures, how can we truly hunger? How can we truly thirst? How can we recognize those who hunger and thirst for our king, Yahusha, the living bread? Bible says, those who feed on him. Are we feeding on our king, Yahushua? Because when the Bible says we ought to feed on our king, Yahushua, it means we are to depend on our king for our daily sustenance. Nowadays, many people rely and depend only on material things. Spiritual things, they don't really bother. It's not a priority. And so it's material first, spiritual next. It should be the other way around. Because if we give priority to material things, the spiritual aspect of us, it perishes. But if we give priority to what is spiritual, the material will be supplied when it's needed. It must be priority. Spiritual matters must be priority. We need to feed on our, on our king, Christ Yahushua. What does it mean that we ought to feed on Christ as the living bread? You notice what he said? Christ says, our king says, anyone who eats my flesh, anyone who drinks my blood. And so our king Yahushua is telling us we ought to eat his flesh. We ought to drink his blood. Question, is this literal and physical drinking of blood and eating of flesh that our king Yahushua is speaking about? Of course not. He's speaking in analogy. He's speaking in metaphors. He's speaking in symbolism. What is his message? He mentions it right there. He wants us to be in him and he in us. This is why he says, in me and I in him. Do you see the picture of what our King Yahushua is trying to tell us? He's telling us what he wants to happen with his disciples is for all of us to have this deep dynamic relationship with him. He in us and we in him. This is the relationship our King Yahushua is teaching. When we are able to practice, when we are able to learn how to relate, how to have deep fellowship with our King Yahushua, we will never lack anything ever again. We will have everything that we can ever need in our life. And who testifies about this? Who is an example of one who thirsted for, who hungered for, and when he received the living bread, he became a changed and different person altogether. Let's read what it says in the book of Philippians 4, 12 to 13. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. You know who spoke that message? Do you, know who, do you know who wrote this passage? Who wrote that passage? Which apostle? If you said Apostle Paul, you are correct. The Apostle Paul, before he found Yahushua, he was proud because of his heritage. He was proud because of his religion. What was his religion? The same religion as the Pharisees. He was hungering and thirsting, and he was doing his best to obey the laws of Moses, the Ten Commandments, and he was successful at doing that. However, that was not enough. Because our King Yahushua says, what was given to Moses is good, but it's not enough. You see, the whole point of the gospel, the whole point of the word of God points to who? Our King Yahushua. Apostle Paul did not learn that. And so he was not fully satisfied. But when Yahushua appeared to him in a vision. It changed his life. He hungered and thirsted for him, and he was fully satisfied. How satisfied was Apostle Paul? It did not matter anymore 
what his circumstances were. He knew he can do all things because of Christ who strengthens him. Look at what Apostle Paul says here. Perhaps many of us can relate. Apostle Paul says he knows what it's like to have nothing. How many here knows what that is like? Maybe there are people or our brethren from different parts of the world who are going through a depression or a recession. Maybe they lost their job. Maybe they're going through difficult times, feeling like they have nothing. There are those who knows what it's like to have everything. When you have everything, sometimes you think, okay, I'm good. I'm happy. But there are people who have everything, but they're not happy. There are people who have everything, riches, wealth, wisdom, fame, but they commit suicide. But Apostle Paul says he knows what it's like to have nothing, to have everything. It doesn't matter what situation I'm in. I can endure all things. I can do everything because of what? Because of Yahushua. You see, when Yahushua is in us, we're completely satisfied. We are filled. When we read the Beatitudes, beloved brothers and sisters, we want you to see Yahushua. We want you to see that Yahushua is bringing us to himself. That's the whole point of the Beatitudes, to bring us to himself. The whole point of the gospel, in fact, the whole point of the scriptures from beginning to end, Genesis to Revelation, is for Yahuwah to bring us to Yahushua. It's all about him. Because when Yahushua is in us and we in him, we're fulfilled. We can do everything. And so let us make sure, brothers and sisters, in our life, Yahushua dwells in us. But how can that be? How can we have our king, Yahushua, the king of kings and lord of lords? How can it be that he dwells in us as well? Let's read what it says in the book of Ephesians. 3, 16 to 17, 19 to 20, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. How can we have the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, to be in us? And work through us when we prepare a place in our hearts for him. Do you see that in the passage? Apostle Paul tells us how we can create and make a home in our hearts for our King Yahushua. You see, for our King Yahushua to be in us, we have to prepare a place for him. Right? Otherwise, where will he dwell? How can we prepare a place in our heart for Yahushua to dwell in us? The Bible says, and the key word there starts with the letter T. Trust. You see, when we learn to trust in our King Yahushua, we are preparing a place in our hearts for him to dwell in us. You see, there's a difference between faith and trust. By faith, we draw near Yahushua. By faith, we draw near Yahuwah Elohim. However, when we go beyond faith and we learn to practice faith by learning trust, now we prepare a place in our hearts so that not only do we draw near Yahushua, Yahushua enters in us. And that begins with trust. How can we learn to trust? Here's the thing. Brothers and sisters, we cannot learn trust when things are going well. We cannot learn trust during good times. We only learn trust when we go through trials and tribulations 
in our life. And so if any of us are going through some kind of difficulty, beloved brethren, it's actually an opportunity to prepare a home in your heart for Yahusha to dwell in. Let us do that. When we go through trials and tribulations, all the more we should hunger and thirst for our king to fill us, to be in our hearts. Do you know when food tastes better? When we're hungry. Do you know when water tastes better? When we are thirsty during difficult times. When we're being tested, we're being tried. Brethren, why not hunger and thirst for our King Yahusha? Why not ask him to enter our hearts, prepare a place in our hearts for him by trusting in our King Yahusha? You see, when we trust Yahusha, we learn to love him more and more. Yahusha knows about trust because he himself, he demonstrated that before his disciples. This is what we studied last week. When Yahushua bent his knees and prayed to the Father there in Gethsemane, he asked the Father, Father, if it is thy will, may this cup of suffering pass for me. That was a prayer of faith. But then he said also, yeah, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You see, the, what allowed our King Yahushua to go through Gethsemane? was his relationship with the Father. It was his love for the Father that gave him the strength. Because he said, not my will, but thy will be done. For Yahushua, what mattered most was his relationship with the Father. The love of the Father was what gave him the strength to go through that. We can also follow the same example. In our King Yahushua, he's telling us now our love for him. And his love for us is what will give us strength so that we can go through whatever we're going through. We pray a place for him in our hearts and allow our King Yahusha to dwell therein. Do you know what proves that Yahusha wants us to prepare that place in our hearts for him? Let's read the final passage in our studies today. In the book of Revelation 3, 20 to 21, look I have been standing at the door, and I am constantly knocking. If anyone hears me calling him and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. I will let everyone who conquers sit beside me on my throne just as I took my place with my father on his throne when I had conquered. This is our king speaking. And in this passage, which basically concludes his message to the seven assemblies, he's telling us that he wants us to experience him not just one time, but all the time. He should be our daily bread. And so what does he do? He says, I'm constantly knocking. He wants to be with us, to fellowship with us, to dine with him. Brothers and sisters, let us spend time with our King Yahushua. With every day in our life, let us set apart a time where we can fellowship with him, that we can experience what it's like to be in him, in him in us that we can feed on our King Yahusha, be strengthened by his presence. Do you know how great an invitation this is? This is the greatest invitation of all. Can you imagine? Someone like Yahusha desires to have a relationship with us. When you think about the great leaders of the world today, maybe the president of the United States, Maybe you can write to him and say to him, I want to have an audience with you. I want to have a meeting with you. Maybe just five minutes. If you write to him, do you think you'll be able to get that? Probably not. You have to be someone accomplished. Someone who's famous. Someone who has achieved something. 
But for most of us, we will be ignored. Our king will never ignore us. It doesn't matter what our accomplishments may be. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter where we came from. If we go to our king and we prepare a place in our heart for him because we have learned to trust him, you will hear that knock. Open that door, brethren. Let Yahusha come into your heart. Let him tr transform you. You will be filled with joy. You will be filled with peace. This is what enabled the early followers of our King Yahusha to overcome the persecutions of Nero. They would rather die in the arena of beasts than to reject the King Yahusha. And when they were being persecuted, when they were being slaughtered, when they were being killed, they had an aura of peace and joy. It was because Yahusha was in them. And what was happening to them did not matter. We're going through tribulation now. Let Yahusha be in us. Allow him to fill each one of us with his presence to give us that life that he wants to bless us with. But it begins with him being in us that we can be strengthened in our faith. Let us stand, brethren, and we shall pray. Everlasting Father, thank you so much for giving us the living bread. Yahuwah Abba, just like during the days of Yisrael in their journey across the wilderness, you supply them with manna. We have something much better, the fulfillment of your plans and purposes. It has come to fruition. At last, the promised son, the promised Messiah, he has come. He is with us. The living bread is what you give to us because of your love and compassion. We now have complete relationship and fellowship with him. And we are satisfied and filled. Our King Yahushua. We accept your invitation. You are knocking now on the doors of our hearts. We prepare a place for you. Dwell in us. Every day teach us to hunger and thirst for you. During difficult times in our life, when we feel we have nothing, we will cry out your name. We will call you Savior, but we will mention your name as well. Yahushua, Yahushua, be with us. Perform your miracle. It is your love for us that gives us strength to go through trials and tribulations. Be in our midst now, wherever we may be from different places throughout the world. May you visit your servants. That will be a special moment for us. Oh, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, who are we to have an audience with you? Who are we that you should be in us? We have not done much at all. We are imperfect human beings. We have sinned repeatedly, but we know and understand you are patient with us. Help us to be moldable. Help us to follow you. Strengthen us once again. We beg you, loving King, by your precious name, Yahushua, we pray for our brethren. You know who they are, who are sick afflicted with disease. Please, oh gracious King Yahushua, be merciful now. Heal your servants. Perform, please, your miracle. You are the living bread. 
We want you. We long for you. Be in our midst. Father, thank you so much for listening to our prayers. Thank you so much for the power of your spirit. Never leave your people, for you are our Allahim in heaven. Loving Yahuwah. Bless our loved ones. Bless our children, wherever they may be. Protect and guide them. Bless our parents in their old age. Keep them safe. Protect them from harm and danger and from sicknesses. We believe, Father, you have listened to our prayers. You have blessed the assembly of Yahushua. We ask everything in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. May Yahuwah Abbas, unfailing love and tender mercies overshadow us. The memory and peace of Yahushua HaMashiach strengthen us. And the constant companionship of the Ruach Kadash be with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Uh, brothers and sisters, just a few reminders. Uh, we have our BQA and BHP for next week. However, the BHP, Thursday for next week, uh, we will only have it via Facebook Live and not Zoom. Uh, hopefully, um, you can keep that in mind. And so it doesn't mean you won't be able to access it. You'll be able to still join, but only through Facebook Live. That's for the BHP this coming uh, Thursday. Also, uh, we have our discipleship training program, which will occur next uh, next day, right? Tomorrow. And so this will be our orientation. And so in the orientation, we will introduce you to, you know, uh, those who will be participating. You get to meet one another. Um, also, we'll be able to show you the curriculum, what is expected from you, so that we can fully benefit from this whole program to prepare ourselves to be true disciples of our King, Yahusha. This will be for January 15, tomorrow at 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, we can go to our Facebook page. Right? We have a Facebook uh, page, and we do recommend that you follow our Facebook page, Assembly of Yahusha. That way, you we will be we can we will be able to give you an invite if you haven't been invited already to the discipleship training program. But if you you want to be part of the discipleship training program, uh, please let us know uh, by sending us a, re, uh, a request. And so you can go to the Assembly of Yahusha Facebook page and click on the discipleship training program, and it will submit a request to us. So we we will approve the request pending. Of course, that we know who you are. This is why we need to know, use your real name instead of, you know, something else. We need to identify the participants. Um, also, when we do have our discipleship training program, it's going to be via face, uh, not Facebook, but um, Zoom. But we'll be using the meeting uh, platform, not the webinar, so that we are able to interact with one another, which means, well, your video is going to be up. And we're going to be recording um, the uh, the whole program. Um, so if you are willing, and if you're not shy, you're not you're willing to have maybe so, a, a, a snapshot of your picture in there. Um, then you can you should participate with us. If not, then you probably should not join us. Okay. So if you're afraid to be seen, if you're afraid to be expelled from you know from for, from the place we're thinking about. If you're afraid to get expelled, then don't participate with us. This is not for those who are overcome by fear of expulsion, okay? But if you are confident that Yahushua is your king, then you can join us without fear of being exposed, okay? Uh, we understand there are people in the Philippines who do not want their faces shown. We understand that. But for the discipleship training program, if you want to participate, then we need to have your videos on. And at the same time, um, we're going to be recording it. We're going to upload uh, the program also only in this private Facebook page. So it's accessible not 
by everyone, but only by those who are included in the private private page. Okay. All right. Uh, we are to fulfill our assignments, which is to memorize the Shema, the Ten Commandments, and the Beatitudes. How many have memorized the Ten Commandments already? Oh boy, my wife is like, uh, she's lowering her head. <laughs> Right, the Beatitudes and the Shema. So we still have time. We still have 24 hours, more than 24 hours to memorize all of that. Okay. Also, we have our upcoming Sacred Names Conference, uh, January 28th, from 12 o'clock noon to 3, 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So in Arizona time, I believe it is from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, but we will have a worship service gathering as well before the Sacred Names Conference and the worship service gathering will be the regular time that we have it, which is 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Again, this is in Tucson, Arizona. We would be thrilled if you can join us in person. But if not, you can still be with us, in a sense, by joining through Zoom and Facebook Live. That is all. Yahuwah Abba and Yahusha HaMashiach bless all of us.